let's come on over here. Over here, this is again, this right here is inside the collar. It is bright only because the flash went in there. The light went in at an angle and uh, at a horizontal angle into places it normally would never be. So I want to at least show that past that front edge that's going around behind the neck, we have things getting a little darker. Now there's another thing that's happening here, but again, it's too small for me to be able to do a whole lot with. Actually, this collar is blocking the corner of this hat ever so slightly. It comes across like this. And that is another opportunity for us to have something block our view and is an advantage when we want to really establish depth and dimension. This ear is the same situation. And so there are things about the ear that, uh, and, and we'll, we'll uh, discuss ears more and more as we go along, but uh, for the most part, we want to show our levels here too. These are all blocked by this front ridge. All these come in and they disappear behind this front edge. Well, if I have to go past something, I have to have a clean edge. Now we're going to create a shadow that is basically disappeared in the source. So then we have uh, this little, for lack of a better term, somebody out there must know what it is. I keep forgetting. But this little uh, part of our ear that's almost like a little wind deflector before it goes into our ear. But this, again, is a very tight shadow only because of the flash. This would normally be a clean edge here because we have to go past, and then we would have this be soft, showing that, that, uh, that deep part of our ear there that's dished out. But again, utilizing the fact that this is in front of this, this, this is in front of this, and now we have a chance to start showing a little more dimension. We don't have that competing with maybe a highlight in the eye or an apex of a nose or a cheek that we need to be able to bring something forward. There are places on the ear that will be, you know, bright and so that, because we have to show uh, contour and dimension as well. But often, again, they are far brighter in a picture than they are in real life. We can go ahead and take away the fact that there is a line representing this. We could take this back. And I want every opportunity I can to pull something forward. Just like on the edge of the face over here, our face tends to come forward as we you know, create a shadow behind it. You can even do this though uh, with the white backgrounds, uh, you know, a little bit different uh, uh, thing that we're doing there, I, but I would like you to try that because it teaches you some other things. It teaches you to get enough value in your uh, light skin tones and things like that, whether you have a background or not. When you have a background, you have a tendency to kind of cheat a little bit and uh, use that dark background to s offset the, the uh, lighter face facial uh, values. And uh, I would like you to make sure you have something in those areas instead of you know, deciding, well, I don't need to do that. I have the background that will set it off. But uh, I want to be able to have enough value in here that I can contour the face as well. And now this is something else. When we have an artificial light projected in there, it often will make this entirely too bright. And I like to be able to have a very subtle edge to the... Well, this is going to be difficult because this pencil is so dark. But I like to be able to use the gums and shade them a little more, just a little bit, just enough to suggest that they are behind that edge of the lip, the bottom edge of the top lip. And it helps us get a little more dimension again. Go ahead and take a look at this. I think that there is a little more value over here as well. Again, some things are brighter because the light was artificially projected in there. But we don't want this to just 
be a, a, a soft transition into the lip, otherwise we're not going to have any dimension there. And as it goes back here, this is a little bit, this is quite a bit higher and deeper, uh, partly because of the perspective. He has his head turned and we're seeing everything get a little darker as it recedes back here. Going up underneath the mustache, if I'm going to do that, I have to have at least some clean edge to separate the mustache from the from the uh, lip. Now we see this coming down here. This is this would not be that bright. Okay, let's go ahead and come up. I think this is a, a quite well done mouth and teeth. Uh, I just uh, think there are a couple things that I'd like to be able to show you how you could even go further with it. But the nice thing about it is uh, this person did not try and draw lines to separate teeth. I, I would rather use uh, just the edges, look into the recesses of the mouth, the edges of the, of the lip and the gums, you know, to develop just a little bit of a V here for the gum. And often the rest of it will start falling into place instead of trying to draw around each tooth. It just doesn't usually work too well. But if I'm going to go past over here, because that tooth is in front of this area we're looking at, then I'm going to do that. And uh, Anyway, I think those are some things that might help this. And uh, I'm so excited again. This is so, so much fun uh, seeing everybody's work. And I hope that you can see some advantage of being able to uh, utilize some of the things I've shown you. And uh, see you in the next demo.